um, learn more about the hidden gems in our community, um, learn more stories about Black folks who are inspiring us. Um, and so thank you, Jamia, again, for always creating um, creating content and creating books and writing the stories and the narratives that reflect us and who we are as a people and the great expansiveness of who we are as a people. Um, so I'm really excited to get into this book because I feel like there's like new, new people and new identities that I'm like, oh, wow, this is really exciting. So let's jump into it. Um, let's see. Uh, so this is what we're going to be up to where we have arrived. We had a little musical interlude on our arrival, Aretha Franklin's version of Young, Gifted, and Black. Um, we are in the welcome. Welcome. I hope y'all feel welcome. And uh, we're going to do a check-in with each other. We're going to do a couple of readings from the new version of the book. Um, and then we'll have an art activity and we'll close. So we only have, a, a you know, we have a one hour together. And so... Uh, we appreciate you taking your time on a Friday afternoon to come and spend time with us um, and to celebrate this book and also celebrate your babies who are also young, gifted, and Black, too. So here's our crew that is on today. We have um, Ashley Carell, who will be doing um, our activity. Ashley is one of Parenting for Liberation's um, inaugural innovation fellows. Um, if you don't know about our Parenting for Liberation Black Innovation Fund, um, please get into it because it's an exciting program where we get to support Black parents in sharing um, and like supporting them and resourcing them and giving them wraparound support with ideas that they want to cultivate. So if you have an idea that you want to cultivate and you want to do it in community with other Black parents, be on the lookout for our application around Juneteenth this year. So Ashley is the founder of uh, Nature Time and she'll tell you a little bit more about that later. She's also a mama and a forest school teacher for hella years. And when I say forest, she really be in the forest teaching babies. It's a beautiful thing. She's gonna tell you all about it. Um, you all know or may know Jamia Wilson, who is author of all the all books, um, also an editor and an activist and a movement builder and a feminist. Um, and she's a vice president and executive editor at Random House. You might know her from this book. I only got a couple of her books. She got some grown up books too, actually. I just didn't pull them out. She got books that she write for the adults about how to be like movement builders and feminists. So thank you, Jamia, for all your words. You know, that's your gift. And then I'm Trina. I am the founder of Parents of Deliberation. I'm a mama. Uh, and I also am a professor now. I got to start remembering that at Cal State Fullerton. So all the big ideas, all the big ideas. Yeah. So these are the people who are going to be holding space for you um, on this call. And so thank y'all for being saying yes to the invitation, both Jamia and Ashley. All right, so now I'm actually going to turn to Ashley, who's going to invite us into some grounding and connecting um, with ourselves and with nature. Ashley. Beautiful. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ashley. People call me Teacher Ashley as well. Feel free to call me either one. And before we get started with our grounding poem, I wanted us to wake up our bodies, wake up our minds and our imagination and connect all of those things before we get to introducing each other and getting to know more about these change makers from Jamia's book. So we'll start with a little five second body shake. We will count down from five all the way to one with one arm and then the other arm. And if you can do a leg or even a toe and then another leg and another toe, that would be wonderful. I'll count down and then after we can just check on our heart rate and settle into the space. Are you ready? We'll start with whatever hand feels right. Go. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch. Five, four, Three, two, one, switch. Legs, five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Shake your legs. Four, three, two, one. 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 Ready? Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, 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 one. And maybe we'll shake our whole body just to settle in. Three, two, one. Oh, just shake it out. Perfect. Check on your heart rate. Feels good, right? We shook it all up. 
Wonderful. And now that we've woken up our bodies, we can take a deep breath in. And I'll share this poem by storyteller and poet, Linda Goss. We can turn on our imaginations and create a forest together. Maybe each one of us is a part of this forest working together today. We can imagine that. We can reach up high and say, I am a tall redwood tree. I am a small bumblebee. We'll wake up our voices. I am the morning sun laughing. <laughs> I am the flowing seas. I am the cool breeze. I can see it now, our beautiful, growing, thriving forest here. You can take another deep breath in. And make sure to have some water. If you need to wiggle around, you can wiggle around. Whatever you need to do to feel good here, all energies are welcome. We can move to the next slide and begin introducing ourselves, keeping in mind this beautiful forest that we have, opening up our imaginations. I will share my name and I will share how I feel connected to nature. And here's a little secret, we are nature. So, yeah. So we're just gonna connect all of these things and I can introduce myself to, to show how we do it. My name is Ashley. And today I am feeling excited. I'm feeling excited and it reminds me of going to a grassy park to run around and roll around. It reminds me of a grassy park. My name is Ashley and today I feel like a grassy, sunny park. Lorena. Hi, my name is Lorena and I feel peaceful like a cherry blossom tree mm -hmm. I got to go see this morning so I'm Lorena and today I feel peaceful like a cherry blossom tree thank and you Lorena yes if you could actually choose participants I would really appreciate that thank you cool <laughs> um I'm not sure if Fiery is available B. If not, you can drop it in the chat. I'll pass to Jamia. My name is Jamia, and I feel like a bumblebee, like a queen bee that is moving in the direction of the hive. Okay. Hi, my name is Casey, and I feel like I feel happy like the sun on a summer day. Uh, hi, I I'm Channing Flag, and I right now I feel oh, ill, cool, like I the, like a calm ocean or like a gentle breeze. Huh? Hi. No. How about you? Hi. No. Okay. Well. Um, my name is Chelsea and I feel um I guess I feel kind of fluid. Now I don't really know fluid like Hi. the ocean. <laughs> kind of just moving, swaying. Um, I don't know who to pick next. Um, Elaine. 
Oh, Elaine already went. I don't know. Well, okay. She's in the chat. Lane. I can't talk. Lorraine put it in the chat. I'll read it for you. Lorraine's working. Um, hello, my name is Elaine, and I feel elated like the blue skies. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll go since I'm unmuted. My name is Trina and I feel, I feel bright like a shooting star. So like a moving light. Um, and I'll pass to Myowa. Hey folks. Um, my kiddo wanted their response written. So I put that in the chat, but I'll say for me, my name is Maiwa, and I feel grounded like the roots of a tree. Um, and for some reason, I'm having a hard time seeing other folks. Let me see. Uh, there we go. Think there we go. <laughs> um, did Elaine go? Yes, I believe that's everyone. Maya. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I love the happy flowers with many colors reference. So thank you for sharing everyone. Um, thanks for sharing how you feel. Thanks for being with us. Um, and thanks for reminding us, Ashley, that we are all nature. I was like, well, like obviously, and also is it sometimes I forget. Um, so we are here to discuss this lovely book with Jamia. Um, Jamia, I'm gonna pull you up on screen with me. Um, and I wanted you to talk a little bit about how you were inspired to do this book, to write this book, and the title of the book, Young, Gifted, and Black. You know, we just heard a little snippet of a song. But we know that Nina Simone sang the song, and we know that Lorraine Hansberry book is, you know, so what's all your inspiration for this book, and why part two? Thank you so much for having me. I love P4L, and this community is so amazing. I wrote the first Young, Gifted, and Black along with illustrator Andrea Pippins, who was amazing. During a time where there seemed to be a lot of cultural change happening and where we needed a lot of hope in our community, that there were a lot of things happening in the world that were making us think that we needed to give the next generation something to celebrate, something inspiring, and something, a way to see themselves in the pages of a book telling positive stories about Black lives. Andrea and I are about the same age. We grew up during a time where there were some really signature books about what it meant to be Black in the world, but there were very few. And we wanted to take our opportunity to be able to create a love letter to the next generation in the form of a book that would celebrate Black excellence, that would celebrate Black people who have made change around the world from different walks of life celebrate our diversity as Black people, while also being able to give people an insight into what the things were that those Black people did in their earliest years that helped shape them. So if they had hobbies or passions or dreams as young people or as babies or as kids that made them think of what they wanted to be that they when they grew up or made them change their mind about what they wanted to be we would put those in the book so that people could see that the things you're doing in your youth the experiences and the adventures you're having in the process of chasing your dreams also have a role that they play in shaping how you can change the future and we were inspired by the song Young, Gifted, and Black, and you heard Aretha Franklin singing Nina Simone's song, Young, Gifted, and Black, that was written by Nina Simone as a tribute to her friend, the late Lorraine Hansberry, who was the very first Black woman to ever write a Broadway play. And since this book was initially performed in 1969, it's been covered and sampled by many different artists. So in a way, this book is our sample of it as well, because in the speech where Lorraine Hansberry spoke about to be young, gifted, and Black, it came from her saying to a group of young Black people, the world needs your gifts. The nation needs your gifts. So this is about how the heroes we look up to can inspire each of us to make 
or do with our own unique gifts things that will help us chase our dreams, help us uplift our communities, and help us take care of ourselves and each other in really positive ways, really hopeful ways, and really celebrated ways. Because there's enough bad news that we each hear every day, and we wanted to share the good news. So that's how we did the book. We received an overwhelming response from around the world. This book has been published in many different languages. And sorry, I'm now having some New York uh, sirens, if you can hear them behind me. This book has been published in many different languages, including French, Brazilian Portuguese, several different um, dialects of Spanish and other languages, um, also French Canadian in addition to the um, French from France version. And we did this so that people around the world could also be able to read this book in their language to see themselves in the stories in the book, but also to connect with each of these heroes in their language. And you'll see in the book that all of the icons are listed chronologically, and we are able to show how Black people have been changing the world since the 1500s and before up to the present day. So I'm just really excited to be able to talk with you about this book. We're going to focus today on some of the people who did a lot of work in the natural world and outside, but that's another reason why this book was important to us, to feature the contributions of Black people from every continent or who had made a difference on every continent, but also to show that we can do everything in every different space, including in the natural world. Yes, thank you. And I did want to show folks, this is, um, this is Andrea Pippins, who is the illustrator who creates the visuals, the beautiful visuals um, for this book and many other books as well. Um, and as Jamia shared, like it's, is this book 52 stories? Or are there more this time? So as you'll see in my books, I like 52. So yes. the first book was 52. And the reason why is so that um, for the kids who are in the room, how many weeks are there in a year? So the idea of it is that you have the ability if you want to read it this way. Some people like to read it all together at once, but you can also focus on one person a week, discover about them and engage, ask questions, read parts of the stories together. And we want it to be a hero you can focus on or in the classroom or if you're homeschooling to be able to take on one per week in case it feels like too much to do one, uh, to do everything at once. And I also have another book coming out in October, A Year of Black Joy. And in that book, it's also 52 lessons from Black people about the ways they find joy. So you'll see that that's a really powerful number for me and my books for younger readers, uh, that the 52 is on purpose. And it's really so that people don't feel like they have to do it all at once. You can choose to savor each and every life, every experience, and every story. That's so, that's so helpful, especially as I think about parents who are like homeschooling or educators. Um, you can make like each person each week a whole focus, like learn some, read this part, learn something about them, watch a movie about them, go listen to a song written by them, you know, like, and then practice some of the things that they do. So we're kind of going to get into two today um, who are really connected to the natural world or to nature um, and really thinking about that as a theme. So you also could like read it in themes if you want it um, and create content our curriculum around some of these folks or all of these folks so 52 folks here are some of the folks in the new book um so i just wanted to admire and appreciate um the way that you um, expanded you know like who's included you talked about different places right so folks from different continents um all over the world folks who are familiar folks who are you know pop culture, but also folks who are writers, folks who are less familiar. So I really appreciate the diversity from like um, Octavia Butler and um, Thomas Sankara. And I can't see this, is that is that Iman? And I just can't see the title, Iman. I got all the Zoom stuff on top of it. Um, and then I also appreciate, you know, like expanding in terms of like gender identity, right? Um, especially given the current climate and the war and the anti-trans sentiment that exists in our world, right? Like really being intentional about who you're including in the book, like a Laverne Cox, 
um, and just wanting to be as expansive as we can be. So Phoebe Robinson. Um, and so today, like we said, we're going to focus on some folks who are doing some nature based work. Um, and so we're actually going to get into the book and read a story um, of George Washington Gibbs. And so Jamia, do you want to take that away? We're going to show a little bit of it on screen and Jamia is going to read for us. Thank you so much. And thank you for your kind words. Um, one thing I want to say is when you see this beautiful image designed by Andrea um, here, there's some trademark pieces to her images that if you want to study these later, you want to look in the book, um, there are things you'll find. There's a trademark crown, the way that she crowns her black figures and her art always moves me. Sometimes it looks like there are wings that there's a ways that we can fly she really creates movement in our people so i also just wanted to say that this is an example of that in this beautiful art so we're going to talk about george washington gibbs jr he was born in 1916 and he passed away in 2000 and he was a naval officer and he was a pioneer he became the very first african-american sailor to reach antarctica receiving the silver, the silver U.S. Antarctic Expedition Medal. He was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and George was enlisted in the U.S. Navy at the age of just 19 years old. Four years later, he was selected to join an expedition to Antarctica, and due to racist policies in the U.S. Navy at the time, the only position that he could hold was what they called a mess attendant. His duties included cooking and cleaning. George was frustrated by his lack of options and the racism he faced, but the opportunity to set foot on the frozen lands of Antarctica was one he had to take. Throughout the expedition, George rose to every challenge, and he was praised by, for his energy and his loyalty. After the expedition, George fought in World War II, surviving the torpedoing of his ship and helping others stay alive too. He left the US Navy in 1959 and went on to earn university degrees and to have a successful career in business. He became a civil rights organizer and never stopped challenging unfairness and racial discrimination. And now there is a point in the Antarctic Peninsula that is named in his honor. And when you see it in the book, there'll be a little bubble in it that says that, and it's called Gibbs Point. So there will be a point that is marking his impact on the world, on the continent. Um, forever. And his daughter said that he had bigger visions and would not be contained in a box, which is really, really powerful. And I encourage you to do some exploring on your own too, to find out even more details about him. He was one of my most fun people to research and discover as I was thinking about who was going to go into this book. I was talking and was muted. Sorry, now I can't go back. There we go. So George, thank you for sharing about George Washington Gibbs Jr. I hadn't heard about him before this book. So that's what I'm like, I really appreciate the book introduces you to new people, new content that you wouldn't know. I didn't know that there was a black man who had a point in Antarctica named after him. That's dope. Black people are everywhere. Thanks for reminding me, even in the cold places. And us Californians are like, oh my God, rain. And we don't know what to do with it. It's like, oh, okay, Black people can withstand the cold. Okay, okay, good to know. And even those of us from Florida, because he's from Jacksonville. I know. I can do that. I can stand the cold. Um, so his daughter, as you said, has said he had bigger visions and would not be contained in a box. And so our question for folks on the call, if you feel so inclined, again, you could put in the chat is, what are your out of the box visions or dreams? Like, do you have like ideas or imaginations beyond what some people might limit us to do? So inviting folks to reflect on that. And if folks want, anyone wants to share, give folks a few minutes, seconds. Are there any reflections on George Washington Gibbs so far? Anything you learned about him that you're like, oh, that's really cool. Ooh. 
Chelsea was one of your two oh. friends. Oh, um, well, me, one of uh, my um, uh, visions and dreams is like um, to create um, uh, educational well, um, uh, game aimed to teach about Black act history and Black people. Oh, because um, uh, one day a, I was um, uh, playing, after playing this game, I was talking with my mom um, and talking about stuff. And then I re realized I wanted to like help um, uh, the struggle of Black people. And I wondered how I was going to do that. But then I realized I was playing on like learning coding to make a, to make like video games and stuff like that. And I thought, well, maybe one of the things I make could be an educational game for Black uh, kids. So um, that's one of the things I'm planning to uh, do um, uh, later in life. And I'm working on it right now. So, yeah. I love that. That's so dope. You're taking coding classes and learning coding so that you can make a game, like a video game. And then like now a Black History video game. I would totally play. I don't even play video games or I don't play games. I mean, that's a lot. I play board games because I'm like rotary old school where you dial the phone, I'm, I'm old. So I played the board games, but I didn't really get into video games or games on phones, but I will play it because it's about black people. So thanks for sharing that idea. Um, are there other folks? Ash, did you have something? Yes, I was just so excited to hear that George Washington Gibbs Jr. ventured out, out, out to Antarctica and then came all the way back to the United States and then began um, just spending his life as a civil rights activist and advocating for needs and organizing within his community. And I think our ideas can stretch all the way out to the ends of the earth and they can come right back here into our neighborhoods. And that's what really inspires me about hearing about this change maker. Yes, I love that. I love that. Um, yes, Jamia wants to play your games as well uh, from the flag, the flag crew. And make sure it's on Nintendo Switch because I don't have another game system. So Listen. I have a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Listen, it's probably gonna be a whole new system. <laughs> all, right, uh, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, Nintendo Switch, got it. <laughs> All right, um, let's keep going. Um, do folks feel like they need like a little movement energizer? I'm going to play a, a brief snippet of a song um, by one of the one of the folks in the book. This is also beautiful when you find the book and you find a new person. It's like now you can Google them or find more things about them. So Fela Kunti, do you want to say anything about Fela Kunti really quick before we play a little bit of his song, Jamia, since you had him in the book? So Fela Kuti was one of my favorite people to research for the book. And I would say if you're looking for, you know, a short snippet, you know, you you know got to go to bed, you want a short bedtime story. This is a good one because it's one of the sh shorter but sweeter entries in the book. But it's a beautiful one because in Fela Kuti's life, it shows how a person can be many things at once, an activist, an artist, a thinker, a community builder, a rebel, um, a person who is a unifier, Fela Kuti was all of those things and also was a really devoted musical student who was really um, invested in his craft but also cared a lot about the natural world and the environment and saw how that was connected to the long life of his people and connected to uh, what it means to have sovereignty, which, you know, means that you have uh, the lands that the indigenous people have, that they maintain them. So I think that there's just a lot in that story that can be connected to what's happening in everyday life. And I wanted to just um, give honor to Fela Kuti's story and also to say that Fela Kuti's music has been able to just bring a lot of people together around the world. And um, there have been plays inspired by it, as well as many, many other cultural references. So I really hope that you enjoy reading about Fela. One minute, music break, get up, stretch, maybe do the one, 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 two, three, four, five thing that Ashley just showed us, but some music. 
Okay, let's go. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. We are into our next story. So connected, even the song, right? And talking about George Washington Gibbs. So we're going to learn a little bit about Mari Copini, aka Little Miss Flint. Can you tell us about her, Jamia, and what made you choose her? And you have said, this was my favorite person to write about to the last two. So I imagine you're going to say, this is my favorite person to write about. Yes. So one of the reasons I love Marie is I remember first learning about her. Remember when we were all watching the news, learning about a crisis with the water in, in Flint, Michigan. And I was really inspired that such a young person could make ripples around the world to draw attention at just eight years old to the problem in her community of water access and the human rights issues related to everyone deserving to have access to clean water and just being brave and courageous enough to speak up. So I was very inspired by her. And one other thing I wanted to say is that when doing these books, yes, it's important for us to talk about history, people who lived in the 1500s, the 1800s, people who paved the way for us, whose shoulders we stand on and who we honor as our ancestors, but also to talk about how we are carrying that work forward and how the next generation is carrying that work for us and how we're all connected. And our communities and our ancestors have always known that time is something that is fluid, but I also think it's really important to have people next to each other in the book who are from different times to show that our the ways that we've grown as humans um, might have changed, but that at the core and at the heart, we're still driven by the same instincts of empathy, community care, partnership, and love, and a sense of justice and peace. So that's why I picked her. And Mari Kapani was is an activist and a philanthropist. She was born in 2007, and she captured the country's attention at just eight years old when she saw a problem in her community and used her voice to speak up. She was born in Flint, Michigan, and it would be her hometown that first put her on the map. And in 2014, Flint's local government changed the source of water in the city, but they failed to ensure that the new water supply was safe for people to drink. So the residents noticed the drinking water seemed different. Testing showed that high levels of lead were in the water and thousands of residents were being exposed to dangerous water. Young Marie felt like she had to act. In 2015, she sent then President Barack Obama a letter about the crisis, introducing herself as Lil Miss Flint. Her words inspired Barack Obama and raised awareness around the country. He traveled to Flint to see the problem and authorized $100 million in funding to help. That's a lot of support. 
Since then, Murray has continued to call for change for her community and for other communities. She's spoken at marches, she's raised funds for school children, and she's partnered with a company to produce a water filter so that people like the residents of Flint can drink water safely wherever they are. And she said, we need to protect dreamers. We need to protect kids in the most vulnerable areas. We need love and for people to care about their communities. Yes, yes, love Little Miss Flint and her commitment and her just like that out of box thinking, just like, oh, I want to create a video game similar, but about an issue that was impacting um, her community. And I think even when I heard um, little little flag over there um, in Los Angeles name the, the, the video game, it was about in response to like, oh, wanting to show and have more images of Black people and like in response to the Black struggle is what I heard um, little, little flag say. So just thinking about that, wanting to um, invite folks to reflect on is there a challenge in your community that you know about? Like, is there a problem that you see or you experience? It could be something personal or it could be something that you see a lot of people experience. Um, what's a challenge in your community and what are some possible solutions that you can imagine? So little Miss Flint saw that there was a water issue and she reached out because she's like, something has to be done about this. So I'm curious for y'all on the call, is there a challenge in your community that you have ideas about solution. And just because you have the idea doesn't mean you have to do it. So give folks a few seconds to think. And maybe that feels like a really big question. And maybe we need more time to reflect on it. And sometimes the way that we can reflect on things is by tapping into some art and creativity. Um, and so we're gonna just move. And I want you to hold this question, right? About like, what's going on in my community, my neighborhood, down my block? Um, it could be something you've experienced or witnessed or um, you've heard about on the news, and I just want you to be holding that. Like, what are some what are some challenges, and what are some solutions um, potentially? And we're gonna move forward in like creating space to maybe doodle about it, or dream about it, or take some time to reflect on that question. Sound good? All right. So I'm gonna pass it to you, Ash. I already have my pencils ready. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. Yes, this is a big question. And we have some time to think about where we want to go, what we want to do with this precious and beautiful life, right? So we will grab a piece of paper. Maybe we can work out some of these questions with some drawing. We'll grab a piece of paper. We might need two pieces of paper. We can use one side and then the other side, but we will do a small drawing activity to wake up our imaginations with this question in mind. Are there challenges in your community? Are there big ideas that you want to see come to completion? Mm -hmm. We can start by putting our pencil in the center of a piece of paper. And we can take this line into a spiral. Now, as we're spiraling with our pencil around the paper, drawing a slow line, we can breathe in and out. We can think about the stories we've just shared, venturing all the way out to Antarctica, taking that opportunity to venture out to the icy cold, We can think about Little Miss Flint using her voice and organizing communities. 
we can think about our own ideas as well. Where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Who do we want to, hmm, how do we want to speak up? What do we want to share with our voice? And you can take that spiral now wherever you want to go on the paper. You can move out of the spiral and just move your hand along. There is no wrong or right idea. We are just finding ideas. And when you feel ready, you can end your spiral. I like to add a little heart to mine at the very, very end. I am full of ideas and I am ready to move to my next sheet of paper. On your new sheet of paper or on the other side, you can actually begin drawing a picture of yourself and your community with your big idea. Where do you, who are you? Where are you in this? Draw yourself, draw your face, draw your family, draw their faces. There's no wrong or right way to do it. Just give it a try. And as you're drawing yourself, you can think about your big idea. Is it in your home in New York or Los Angeles or, or Oakland where I live? Is it in another part of the world that you wish to go and experience to learn more and gather ideas? You can just draw yourself however you want. And I am no practice artist, but I know that every time I do practice, I sort of am creating my idea just a little bit stronger and more clear than the first time. Great. When you feel ready, you can now dream even bigger. What is around you in your picture? Are there trees and waterfalls around you? Like, like what my image will be of Oakland here, a vision of waterfalls and clean water, just like little Miss Flint. Maybe it's right in your neighborhood or at your local park. You can just do a quick sketch We have the whole day, or maybe even another day, to add to this portrait and add to the landscape. Feel free to switch colors if you have other colors. Drawing yourself, drawing your community, and drawing the landscape, drawing the environment with big dreams. And you know what, I feel so inspired by the beautiful imagery from this book that I also want to add, if you feel called to add a crown to yourself, add, add some wings to yourself. Give yourself a little crown or a big crown or some shining rays around your shoulders, whatever you want to do. This is you, this is your big idea and we're just getting started. It feels so good to doodle and draw, you guys. My friends here, it feels so good to just doodle. See what kind of ideas come up. Mine looks like a galaxy. Beautiful. Oh, I'm inspired to add some twinkling stars. I can see your galaxy, Jamia, from where I am. <laughs> Very cool. Feel free to share in the chat what is coming up. Maybe mountains, maybe your neighborhood. And we can finish by adding some crowns to our portrait and some wings. And in a minute, we can wrap up our picture. Remember that we can always revisit throughout the day or as days pass and our ideas shift and change or grow, take root. Wonderful. 
believe we have one more minute. Feel free to add a few more colors. Go for it. We'll spend one more minute just filling it in, adding as much detail as we'd like. Beautiful, and we'll wrap up very soon here. And then we'll be able to share with our words or even share our images that we've drawn together and share some of our ideas as a group. You can give me a thumbs up and put your pencils down and show me when you feel ready. Wonderful. We're ready. <laughs> Does anyone feel like sharing their doodle? Sharing their idea? I drew some trees, waterways, and the sky. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Take a moment to have a look at your portrait and share whatever comes up. Shall I hold mine up to share? Okay, so mine is a little, well, you can see my spiral in the back, but mine's, I dreamed about rest and retreating. Is that, this is me and my kid. And then the thought bubble we have is, well, the thought bubble I have, I don't know what he's thinking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about rest and retreat is what came to my thought bubble. Those are little Z's for sleeping. Then I drew a bed over here and then I was like oh and I want to be somewhere where like a bed that's like near the water at the beach palm trees are nice trees so for me yeah I've just been thinking about rest and taking care of ourselves and like if I was thinking about this like in terms of like a challenge in our community in the bigger sense it'd be like oh creating space for like more black parents to have that to have like a place to just like nap or rest or like a beautiful environment, like a beach or ocean or something. So that's what my like personal to like the bigger thing would be. Take a nap. Shout out to the nap ministry. Beautiful. We need rest for these big ideas. Absolutely. Well, I can share mine and you know, I think I'm going to visit this throughout the day. But I shared mountains and a galaxy and myself and children around me. And then I offered us some beautiful crowns and I imagine us in a mountainous space, looking far into the distance, seeing where we wanna hike, seeing what hillside we wanna go over, and what we'll find on the other side of that. And I just really love the imagery from this book, Jamia. So gorgeous. So I just want to add crowns and rays of light all around throughout the day. Thank you. Feel free to share in the chat. Feel free to just share your picture with us. Yes, I think. I think there's a way for folks, if you want to share, I think you can upload an image to the chat. If you wanted to take a picture and upload it, you have that option. Or if you want to show us on camera, you can do that. Or if you want to just keep it to yourself, because you know, you're an artist and you're sensitive about your stuff. That's also <laughs> an option. <laughs> Lorena, are you going to share? You're muted, love. No, just my image. 
there's water and trees and, and that was it mm -hmm. show it again you went so quickly that's okay mm -hmm. okay fine <laughs> awesome um anyone else want to share before we move or if you don't want to share your image, you want to share verbally or in the chat what you drew or what if any ideas came up for you in the drawing activity. And if not, that's okay. All right, we are almost or we're at time. We have one minute left. So um I know folks don't have the book yet, but I'm gonna hold up my book and we're gonna actually send a copy to the families who joined us. We said it was gonna be a giveaway and a raffle, but listen, everyone gets a book. I'm like Oprah, you get a book, you get a book. Every family that joined today gets a book. So what that means is I would need you to take a moment to put your address in the chat. You know, you can do, do it to me personally. Um, if you don't want the whole world, you know, all of us knowing your email, your address, but if you DM me your address um, and or my email address, I will put in the chat so that you can uh, send it to me just so we can mail you a copy. Thank you. There's my email address, Trina at Parenting for Liberation. Um, appreciate you. Oh, I realize you probably can't see the screen anymore, but yes. Yeah. So we're gonna send everyone a book. This is book version one, the yellow one. And that's my kid several, several years ago. He doesn't look like that anymore. I gotta get him to take another copy with this book and we'll do a side by side. So send me your, your mailing addresses so we can get you a copy of this book. Um, thank you. I'm getting some of them in the chat. So appreciate that. And um, if you know, you know, if you wanna find us, you found us to get here. So. <laughs> Please continue to follow us on all our platforms. Um, social media is a way to learn about what we're doing and what's coming up. If you listen to podcasts, we have a whole new series of episodes that you can check out. We have four new innovation episodes. Ashley is one of our innovation fellows and she's on one of the podcasts. And we have a podcast with Jamia um, when she released this book, the part one. So if you're interested and you like podcasts, you can find them there. Um, and we would love if folks could uh, use their phone right now and try to use this QR code to complete a quick after event survey. We're always trying to learn uh, what kind of content to create and offer. Um, and so we wanna make sure that it is in service of you and your families and your children's liberation. Um, so we would love your feedback about our events. Um, the link is also in the chat. If you just kind of click on it, it should open up in another window so that you can fill it out after um, after the session. That is all on my end. Thank you for taking this one hour with us. Um, thank you, Jamia and Ashley for collaborating with P4L. And thank you families for joining us on a Friday afternoon. Y'all wanna say bye? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So grateful for you and sending you all love into uh, what I hope will be a restful holiday and weekend for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You have brilliant, beautiful ideas. I'm going to be spending the rest of this day inspired by you all. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Bye.